Olá a todos and welcome to another Julia Journey Juggling Jargons Joyfully video. In this video we're going to talk about structs or composite types. Uh, since Julia does not have classes, this is the main way of defining functionality for new types. I hope you find it interesting. Please already like and subscribe and I'll see you at the end. So as I said in the previous video, Julia does not have a class type, but we do have structs or and composite types. So in Julia to create a struct, you just say struct and the type. So let's create dices. So you have many sides of dices. These are uh, the traditional six sided dices, but you also have RPG dices, which range from four uh, to a hundred uh, sides. So if you just say struct dice and you create a new dice, this is a, a single value, uh, but you can actually give uh, you can actually give fields to structures. So you can say sides. Uh, this will be an argument with the number of sides. And when you create a new one, you just give a value. And now this is a six sided dice. I want to create a function which is going to be roll the dice and when I call this function, I want to create a randomized value between one and the number of sides. And one and the number of sides is this range. And I can just take a random value from it and return. So this function roll a dice six. This call should return me a number between one and six. Uh, I, of course, forgot to say dice dot sides. This is how you access the value sites from the dice. Now you play and you always going to have a value between one and six. If I have a 20 sided dice, now I have more values, of course. So by default, I could say that, well, if I just create a dice with no arguments, I would expect that a six sided dice is created so I can give different constructors to this structure. So they can be external or internal. So uh, internal one is when I say here, this is a function. You know, just say dice or function dice. And you say, what are the arguments? In this case, no arguments. And you say return new six. And this should work. So you can actually, you can also have an external constructor. This will be outside the struct and you want to put everything related to dice, to the structure dice, the creation in a single cell in Pluto. So the constructors essentially want them all together. And you can't use the new keyword if you have an external constructor. You notice here that I have not given any specific value. So dice just works. I could say, hey, I want the sides, the possible sides. So I can say I have a possible sides const, uh, const which are like just the traditional uh, RPG dices. So these are the traditional ones. I can actually include the 100 ones. And these are the only ones that I'm going to allow. So how can I constrain this? So I say when I have dice sides, I say if the sides is not in the possible sides, I'm going to generate an error. I'm going to throw an error here. Um, maybe an argument error. I don't know which one should be here. And here, if this has not thrown an error, I can actually return a new uh, site. So now this works and this works as well. And if I try to use dice 19, this does not work anymore. It must be one of these. So these are the basics of a struct with a constructor, internal constructor and external constructor. So I have gathered everything inside this, this block. So it makes it easier for our next step. Uh, the next step is the following. Uh, in D&D in &D or other RPG games, you usually want to run more than one die. Uh, you want more than one dice. You want to run like 2d6, which are two six-sided die. Um, so I can, for instance, define what is a d6. So let's create a begin and a d6 is a dice with six sides. And I want to roll 2d6. So first the 2d6 is actually two times d6. And 
I would like this to have some meaning. I want this to work and to actually be the same as rolling two dice. So I can actually create a new struct and I'm going to create the struct which is handful of dice. And a handful of dice is essentially just a bunch of dice. More explicitly, an uh, array of dice. And I want to define what is a row for this. So I just say a row for a handful of dice is... Well, I'm going to call the row function in my internal handful of dice list. Okay, and I'm going to sum the result. Okay, so this still doesn't work, but I can now define a handful of die with a d6 and a d6. And now this has, well, uh, this uh, was defined here. Yeah, this I'm going to comment so it works. So I have two d6 in this handful and I can roll them. Uh, and but it doesn't roll because this is not a dice, this is a handful of dice. Okay, so now I'm rolling these two things and summing the result, and the result should be between uh, two, which is one and one, and twelve, which is six and six. But it still doesn't solve the other problem, which is to have two times these six. What I can do here as well is define a new function. And this function is going to be for a mix of these two things. So I'm going to move the row function down. And I'm going to define this after handful of dice. I want to import base uh, asterisk or times. And I'm going to define times for a type integer. So this is n. It's an integer and a dice. And this is essentially going to be a handful of dice. So I can just say dice uh, for something 1 to n. So this is a vector comprehension. I'm just aggregating a lot of these dice. Return this. But uh, I'm going to wrap it on a handful of dice so that it becomes what I actually want. And now a 2d6 is a handful of dice with 2d6s. And I can do this and I can just roll it. Roll 2d6 works. Roll 4d6 works, okay? So all of these things work by default now. So now what I want to do is I want to run a simulation to plot the histogram of these dice. So I want to create a function histogram that runs for, well, either a dice or a handful of dice. So I'm not sure exactly what it could be. So it's a dice row. Uh, I want it to create the results for 10,000 executions. And I'm going to push into the result a roll of dice roll. So this histogram here, if I call it for a d6, well, I forgot to return the results. If I call it for a d6, you get all of these values. And then you can actually use plots. We're going to have some issues soon. Don't worry about it. And here is the issue that I mentioned. Warning, using plots.histogram conflicts with an existing identifier. And that's because this name histogram is already defined in plots. So what I could do instead is to say dice histogram. So it's a different kind of histogram. And then I say histogram of a d6, which is a six-sided dice. It's pretty close to being uniform. So uh, yeah, it's working. If I say uh, 2d6, it's, it's working as expected. The number 7 is the one that happens more often. Uh, 2 and 12 have about the same probability. 3 and 11, etc. The same thing. 4d6, it looks a lot like a normal. And that's actually uh, expected. So one thing that happened here is that I had to change the name of dice histogram uh, because... 
there was already a plots.histogram. What I could find instead is to find a type for, for my dice row so I don't uh, steal the histogram function. And then I can go back to calling this histogram as well. And here I could, for instance, just call the histogram of histogram. This doesn't work right now. I will have to, for instance, change this to a dice, a handful of dice. And I will have to import here to say plots.histogram because the name is the same. So this is a limitation. But when I say this is a handful of dice, it works now. Uh, but if I move back to D6, this doesn't work anymore because I, I've, I changed it to a handful of dice. I, I can do two things here. The first one is I can actually say this is a union of dice and handful of dice. So if the type is any of these two, this is going to work. But this is not future proof. If I create another kind of dice, like a 40, 46 plus 3, these will have to be different kinds of rows because they are more uh, complex. So I will need different types than the dice and the handful of dice. So if I define this plot histogram for a dice row using union, this is not generic enough. So what I can do instead is create an abstract type. And I do that by saying abstract type, uh, abstract or dice row, or abstract dice row seems a very, very uh, a boring name for this. And I say abstract dice row. So the dice is a subtype of abstract dice row. And a handful of dice is a subtype of abstract dice row as well. When I define the histogram function, I can just say this is a, for any abstract dice row. This should work the same because it's just doing the same thing, rolling this dice row. When I roll the dice row, I should have the result no matter what kind of abstract dice row that I have. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I actually have a package called Dice Rows if you want to know more about this subject. So one thing that I have not talked about yet related to types are parametric types, uh, which are actually very important, but uh, they are not an easy subject to get into in 10 minutes. We're going to move out of that for a while now. We're going to talk about package in future videos. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about parametric types. Uh, especially if you have a use case in mind, so I can play my, my tutorials uh, better. Thanks a lot for watching, please like and subscribe, and remember to click the bell button to be alerted of future episodes. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.